Hello everybody and welcome to chapter 8. We are going to be tackling guided project 8-3 this week in this lecture. Um, it's a little lengthy, it's not uh, rocket science. Um, it is a little lengthy though. Go ahead and download your instructions and start your engines if you will. In this project we are going to create a newsletter uh, for Central Sierra Insurance. You will be applying and modifying a theme and apply a hyphenation, insert a watermark, customize and apply a drop cap, use word art insert and customize text box boxes I should say and then create and customize a chart so with that in mind let me close up and um, mute my sound it's in my ear sorry about that so let's go ahead and do a fast save as save your document um, I have done this once before um, it's definitely lengthy, but uh, it shouldn't take us too long to get through this uh, video. So let me replace the one that I've done. So let's just quickly take a look at our surroundings. We've got the guts, I suppose, if that's what the word we want to use, uh, to our newsletter. So we've got all the wording here, the verbiage, and there looks to appear to be a couple of columns that we have. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at number three. It says to apply, customize, and save a theme. We are going to apply the integral theme. So let's go to the design tab. By now you kind of know where these buttons are and if you haven't already I would highly suggest that you start really becoming familiar um, because this is chapter eight and we're getting close to that final time. So you should know where a lot of these buttons are in your ribbon. So go ahead and click the design tab and let's find the integral theme. Click the colors button and select yellow orange. Next click the themes button and select current save current theme. This saves the current theme dialog box and or it opens the current save current theme dialog box, excuse me. You are going to type in where it says file name, type in CSI for the file name and then click save to the custom theme. Do not change the save location. So don't try to go and find your um, your file where you save all your homework. Just go ahead and click save where it saves it at. Next we're going to set some tab stops and apply a border and shading to the selected text. Turn on the show hide and you know I really don't like the show hide but I'll turn it on because it says to turn it on. Select the second paragraph. Um, by the way um, when I first did that I was kind of thinking this through and using some critical thinking um, and it makes sense. So second paragraph, you would think that these are paragraphs and not just these, but your clue is that when you see a paragraph marking, that's a new paragraph, right? So you've got these, these are your new uh, paragraph markings. So the second paragraph begins with issues and then number and then 10, 5, 1, 1, right? So these are Roman numerals and then we are going to apply the bold formatting. Set a center tab to stop at 3.75 and again that's a center at 3.75 and then set a right tab to 7.5 and then click OK after you're done with that. Use the borders and shading dialog box and we are going to apply a box border and we are going to change the width to one point and then we're going to change the color of the border 
to orange accent one important be sure that the option in the apply to down here is set to paragraph and so you do have another option which is text but we want it to be defaulted to paragraph click the shading tab and select orange accent one lighter 80 percent and this is for the fill color Go ahead and click OK. Number five says to select the third paragraph and change the font size to 22 and apply bold uh, formatting. So the third paragraph is here because we've got one paragraph marking, the second one, and now here's number three. And it says CSI cost effective. And again, um, this would be paragraph four. So just that whole line there and we want 22 font and bold click anywhere in the document to deselect the text and then click the hyphenation button that is located in the layout tab page setup group and we want to select automatic and what this does is um, anywhere that our, let me go and turn off the uh, show hide, anything that's in basically these two columns, if a word happens to be split, it automatically takes those words that you can see here and applies a hyphen. That's all that is. Number seven says to click the watermark button located in the um, design tab and in the page background group and we want to select draft one and that is located in the disclaimers category apply a drop down cap to the first letter in a paragraph place the insertion point at the beginning of the first paragraph in the section with two columns right where you see now you can have Click the drop down cap button and that is located in the insert tab text group and go ahead and open that up and select drop cap options. And this opens the drop cap uh, dialog box. Select the dropped in the position area, change the lines to drop to two and change the distance from text to 0 0.1. Click OK to close the dialog box and to apply the drop cap. And so this is actually a really nice feature and I have used this feature in uh, some, uh, uh, excuse me, in a uh, brochure that I created and I absolutely love this feature. It is definitely a cool feature that you'll uh, want to use often, especially if you're doing a newsletter or anything like that or a brochure. Now let's look at number nine. Apply word art to the title and position the title. Select the Central Sierra Insurance letter. And that's at the top of the document. Click the word art button. So we are already in the insert tab. We need to go to the text group and we again we want the word art button and we want to select fill orange accent one and then shadow notice that in your instructions this week it says fill orange accent color one and we don't have that option so um, again I've done this and you should not get that wrong if you pick um, that one right there so that should be fine. Next click the wrap text button and select tight. Click the position button and select more layout options and this will open up the layout dialog box. In the horizontal area select alignment at center are centered relative to the page. So it's going to align this centered 
relative to the page, uh, this entire page. And then for the vertical, we are going to leave the radio button for absolute position um, selected and do a 0 0.1 and it's going to be below the page. And then go ahead and click OK to close the dialog box. Now we're going to learn how to draw text box around selected text and customize the text box. So select the paragraph of text beginning picture midsummer with temps. So you want that entire paragraph. And we are going to apply bold and ital italic formatting to the selected text. And then click the text box button. We need to go to the insert tab and then over to the text group, so text box. And we are going to select draw text box. And then a text box miraculously appears around the selected text. So um, that is definitely a nice feature. We're giving it a little bit of pop. Next, let's go ahead and click the Shape Styles drop-down. So for that, we need to go into the Drawing Tools, Format tab, Shape Styles, and you are going to select um, the Subtle Effect Orange Accent 1. So second column, uh, fourth row down, Subtle Effect Orange Accent 1. And then change the width of the text box to, looks like it wants us to select, uh, I'm sorry, the width um, to be 7.5. Next, select all of the text in the second column. And to do that, I'm just going to do one of these, just a left click, drag it down and hold it. And then you're going to click the text box button again and we need to go to the insert tab and then the text group so text box and draw a text box and then we do have another text box that uh, appears and now let's change the aesthetics of that so for H and 10H it says to click the shape styles drop down list so format shape styles and we want the subtle effect again, orange accent one. Eleven says to insert a chart and customize the chart title. Place your insertion point at the end of the document. I think all this semester we've been using our control home. It's the same concept. We want to go to the end, so control end. And you can see that we're down at the end. We are just before that last paragraph mark in our uh, um, newsletter. Next, click the chart button. That is located in the insert tab. And we're going to go to the illustrations group. And so we're going to click chart. And then this opens up the uh, chart dialog box. And this is an insert, by the way, chart dialog box. We want columns. So if you happen to be defaulted like I am to all charts, and actually that's the only choice, sometimes, um, especially if you're in Excel, uh, you will have other tabs up here. But we have all charts selected. So go ahead and go to columns. And um, just as a side note, <clears throat> For those that have had Excel, you know, probably have memorized the order of these. Always clustered column is the first one. Um, so go ahead and make sure that that's grayed. I like to click mine just to make sure that I've selected it. And then just click OK to insert the chart. Notice now that we've got um, Excel that popped up here um, for our worksheet which is a very nice feature and I think that we've done this before. If not, um, I'm going to go a little slow. This one um, isn't hard, it's just a little tedious. And I have discovered that um, there is one slight typo in our instructions for 11F. So I'm just going to walk you through this process. So we are going to be typing the information shown in figure 8-100 in your 
uh, instructions and let me just show you give you a visual on that so we're going to be typing this information here into uh, our Excel data sheet. Um, you can follow my lead on this or you can do the instructions. The first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do, um, and it does say this in E, but I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of column D. So that I'll, all I did for that was I hovered over D and you can see my pointer when I move it anywhere it changes shapes but when I hover over the letter D it goes to a down position I right click and then I'm just gonna hit my delete then I'm gonna go ahead and fill in uh, column B heading and I'm gonna tab across and don't forget to uh, double check your um, spelling. You don't want to lose any small points for that. Uh, you will. Now the easiest way to do this is not to fill in column A. Um, I want you to fill in uh, A2 first and then tab across and then tab again to column C. Then that way when you hit your enter it takes you back to column A in uh, cell 3. So it's a little bit easier to do it that way. You don't have to, it just helps you to go a little bit faster. Um, and when you're taking that final, final it's all about speed and how fast you can um, do a move Remember, it's, it's uh, 50 minutes with 40 questions. Now, in E, it does tell you to click and drag the chart uh, data range handle around the chart data that we typed. But I'm not going to do that. And the reason why is because you may recall just a few minutes ago, I did delete this column. So I don't need to. If you were actually following the rules and you still have column D, you would just take your... Um, fill handle and just shrink it to go to C5. Then it says um, uh, back in D at the very bottom it says to resize the column width by clicking and dragging the right edge of the column heading. Uh, you don't have to do that for this. Let me show you a quick uh, tip on this uh, shortcut. In the left-hand corner of any, spread, uh, any Excel spreadsheet, you're going to see um, a triangle that's upside down. Click that. Now your entire spreadsheet is um, selected. Just double click in between one of the columns. It does not matter which column you choose. And once you do that, voila, it expands it. That way you can take a look at your um, spelling to make sure that you've got everything spelled correctly and that there are not any typos. Oh, and don't forget to double check your values, um, especially your values uh, if you're in accounting, because as we know in accounting, we've got to have the right uh, data, right? Alrighty, so with that, you are now, it says an F to click the X in the upper right corner of the chart in Microsoft Word window to close it. Um, uh, so this is correct what they're saying, but I don't want you to really get it confused. This is an Excel spreadsheet that you're in, but it is the Microsoft Word uh, chart. So it's a not really a typo, but it's kind of a typo. It's just not really clear. So number 12 says to customize the position and size of the chart. We are going to select the border of the chart and you should already still have it selected and I can tell it's selected. These are not radio buttons, these are selection handles. Okay, so select the border of the chart and click the position button located in your chart tools format tab in the arrange group. So again that's right up here and you're just going to select um, position and we need to go to position in bottom center with square text wrapping. So 
position and bottom center with square text wrapping. Change the height of the chart to 2.4 and the width is going to be 5.6. So our chart is centered and it looks pretty nice down at the bottom there. Let's give the chart itself some pop now. Let's customize this chart. Select the chart title and we are going to type estimated repair and replacement cost and don't forget be sure to check for um, any typos so proofread and then you're going to um, click the chart element button and we need to go to the chart tools design tab for this in the chart layouts group and you are going to click data labels and then you're going to select outside end. All this does is it took our numbers down here and placed them above um, the, the series if you will. So now uh, instead of being below each of these headers they're now above in the plot area and actually I really like that feature. Okay, so next we're going to customize the chart elements and design. So let's right click the vertical axis and you might recall from uh, the last chapter that vertical um, is up and down um, and then horizontal goes across. So when you're dealing with uh, charts or Excel, vertical are your columns and then horizontal are your rows. So we are looking at the horizontal axis and we are to right click and then uh, the horizontal axis and select your format axis and this opens up your format axis pane and we have that over here. So click the number heading and then click the category drop down list and select currency. We are going to change those numbers or values to currency. And then we want to uh, have no decimal places, so make that two to a zero. And then just confirm that you do have the dollar sign. And before I close up, if you take a look at your vertical axis, it did uh, um, change everything. So go ahead and close your format data pane and there it goes actually it got rid of the decimals. And now let's select style 14 from the chart styles gallery and these are in numeric order and 14 just happens to be the last. And so it, it changes when you hover over them. I just kind of want to give you a visual on that. Um, so this is kind of a nice one. I haven't used this before, but you can see that we've got some um, lines on the outside of our series area um, to really bring those colors out. Okay, let's take a look at 14G. Click the chart elements drop down list. And so that is it located in the chart tools format tab. And again, that is called the Chart Elements drop-down. And if you hover, um, it's over in the Current Selection group. This is your Chart Elements. So open that up. And we want to um, format the Plot Area. So select Plot Area. And that's what this is right in here. And now let's change the color. So click the Shape Fill button. And we want, it looks like, white background one darker five percent select the chart area from the chart elements drop down list and so um, chart area and it selects the entire chart for us and now let's click the shape outline so we're going to put a line around uh, the chart itself so shape outline and we want orange accent one. And then click the shape outline button again. And actually, uh, 
well I was going to get off this I want to show you that we do have that on there um, but it's not really thick enough so um, let's give it a little bit more pop so go back into your shape outline go down to weight and this time we are going to make it really thick and you're going to pick two and a quarter point and now let's click the shape effects button and select shadow and then select offset center and that is located in the outer category and so offset center so we do have a shadow around that personally I think that um, looks great when I look at that you can see the shadow going around it all right that is it before I submit this I am going to turn off my show hide um, I suppose it probably does not matter if you leave it on or off um, but I, I turned mine off and we are going to go into uh, where I save this and that is chapter 8 newsletter and so if you have questions about this you know where to find me in the ask dr barnes a uh, question tab in blackboard good luck everybody